Get three months of local news for just 99 cents a month. You'll get unlimited access to the news you need to stay engaged and connected to your community. Visit Inforum.com slash subscribe now to get three months of local news for only 99 cents a month. A Fargo couple is embracing the past with their mid-century modern house on 9th Street. Hi, this is Tracy Briggs, and welcome to Back Then. Greg Carlson and Katie Smith were sitting pretty on 7th Street. Their home at 1122 7th Street South in Fargo was a classic beauty built in the early part of the 20th century. They put time and money into making it the perfect dwelling to raise their two children, Forrest and Violet. And if that wasn't cool enough... Someone famous once lived there, Carlson said with a laugh. Yeah, it was the Bob Dylan house. You see, Bob Dylan had lived in Fargo in 1959, and he moved in with a buddy who lived in their house, so he spent a lot of time in the attic. And of course, Greg and Katie loved that. So given all of that, why in the world would they move from that place? They both agreed the only way they'd ever move was if a new place was perfect. Hello, Greg and Katie? It's fate calling. Smith had never been on the real estate website Zillow until that early fall day in 2018 when she decided to scroll through some of the properties. That's when she found the home some knew as the Amadon House. The Amadon House at 1701 9th Street South was just a few blocks from where the couple was already living. But like a lot of people who grew up in the Fargo-Moorhead area, Carlson, who grew up in Moorhead, had been familiar with it for years. He said, you drive by and see the windows, and you'd be able to see the art and the plants and things like that. I kind of knew it as a cool Brady Bunch-looking house when I was younger. While it was the Brady Bunch on the outside, it was Mad Men on the inside when it was first built by Blaine and Virginia Amadon in 1959. It was a dream house for the Amadons, the epitome of mid-century modern design, and It was less than a half a mile away from Dakota Hospital, where Blaine worked for nearly 50 years as an OBGYN. Blaine and Virginia Abaddon have both died, as has their oldest daughter, Diana. But their three remaining children, Sherry, Kathy, and Chip, recently shared stories with Inform about their parents and their historic home. I covered that last week on Back Then, so be sure to check that out or go to Inform.com and you can learn more about this really interesting family. Back to Greg and Katie. After stumbling upon the listing of the home on Zillow, almost by chance, Smith and Carlson decided, what the heck? Let's go look at the house. And they did so that very day. Smith said, I think we both thought, this is really charming and interesting. There's some potential here. But hadn't they both agreed it had to be perfect to make the move? Yeah, they did. But in the end, they decided it was perfect. Just their style. You see, while the house on 7th Street was a classic 1916 on the outside, it was 1955 on the inside, just like the Amadon house. Carlson said, we already had all of this mid-century furniture, so maybe it was just in search of the right house for it. Both Carlson and Smith said they liked the clean lines and modern feel of mid-century style, pointing out their black leather couch in the living room. While it was designed in 1934, It still looks contemporary, just simple, not ornate, Carlson said. So in 2018, they bit the bullet and bought their perfect new home on 9th Street. The four-level split was larger than their previous home, which was desirable for their growing children and for all of that mid-century furniture. Carlson says most of their furniture are reproductions. Several favorites from the early 60s include Hans Wegner's wing chair, shell chair, and Pierre Pauline's orange slice chair, They and other pieces now sit where the Amadon furniture sat 60 years ago, between the original wood paneling and the cabinetry. If you stand in the middle of the room today, you might never know it's 2023. I would encourage you to go find these pictures online at inform.com. The the style is pretty cool. You'll have to just see it. It's a bright room thanks to those high ceilings and tall windows Carlson remembers seeing when he was a kid. He said, some people will say, Do you feel like you're living in a fishbowl? But you know, there's something I just love about that. It's the wide open space with the entire set of windows. But Smith and Carlson also love what's outside those windows. Landscaping that matches the level of the house. In other words, while you need to walk up a couple of steps to get to the front door, when you're in the basement, 
the landscaping is such that you can walk directly out to the backyard. Smith said, I found the backyard and I was like, this is amazing because I just always wanted a big backyard. Carlson added, Katie always wanted a swimming pool and a garden. That's kind of her baby. But Carlson, who is a film professor at Concordia College, wouldn't be left high and dry. Smith said, we went downstairs and we looked at each other and said, this is perfect. It could be the home theater. Well, you didn't need to twist Carlson's arm. Six dream loungers now sit in two rows in front of an 85-inch screen, and the adjacent walls are decorated in movie posters. In the outer lobby of the theater are the dozens of 8 by 10 publicity stills of old time and current movie stars. A level up from the home theater is the family room where, in the 60s, the young Amidon family gathered to watch The Wonderful World of Disney and Bonanza while eating a special Sunday dinner of popcorn and ice cream. Carlson and Smith also spend many nights in the family room, which still looks like a throwback to the Amidon's Disney and Bonanza days, with its paneling and original fireplace. Carlson said, In the winter, we really live in this space. We build fires all the time when it's cold. Carlson and Smith said since buying the house, they've had many friends mention that they were delivered by Dr. Amidon, and they've heard a lot about the home's history, but they're always eager to learn more. Carlson says... The Amadon children are always welcome to visit any time. We'd love to meet them and hear some more stories. And word has it there might be a visit in the future. While Blaine and Virginia Amadon set out to build this dream house in 1959, it's evident that it's also pretty perfect for its newest residence. Carlson says, Katie and I feel so fortunate to be the current caretakers of the Amadon house. From our very first visit, we knew it was a special place. To be able to decorate and furnish these magnificent spaces with period-specific pieces allows us to imagine how things might have looked just after the build was completed in the late 1950s. Smith added, You could really build a dream here. The whole space is just perfect. And that is Back Then. Thank you so much for joining me. Hope to catch you next time. If you're loving this podcast, be sure to check out our full lineup. From news and local politics to sports and true crime, find your next great listen right now at inforum.com slash podcasts. That's inforum.com slash podcasts.